This is the new Audi Q5. And if you're wondering why the heck I'm starting this review in this rather bizarre way, it's because I'm trying to make a point. Now, the point isn't that I'm a huge diva and can't be bothered to walk. The point is that this car is an average adult male lighter than its predecessor. In fact, it's improved in so many ways, but you'd have to pay for that. You see, this car starts from £36,000. Though if you click up there to go to carwow.co.uk, you can compare offers at dealers and buy a price you're confident in. Now, for me, the biggest improvement on this car is actually on the inside. Now, the first thing that grabs you is the tech that Audi has chucked at this car. So I've got a huge infotainment display here. The graphics chip on it is super fast as well. You can connect to the internet, you can have Google Maps, and it's all very, very slick. This one's also got the virtual cockpit, so digital driver's display. I can cycle through different screens, have the Navi there as well, all to the size of the dials. It's all absolutely lovely. But Audi being Audi, you have to pay for it. So as standard, the car actually comes with a smaller screen, with a slightly slower processor, and the entry-level SE car doesn't have satellite navigation as standard. Though it's not the end of the world because you do get Apple CarPlay and Android Auto, so you can use the maps from your phone. But really, at this price point, it's a bit mean, isn't it? And if you're going to upgrade to this screen, it's over a grand. And if you want this virtual display, then you have to pay an extra 200 or so pounds on top of that. Now, if you click up there, you can actually watch my detailed infotainment video review and have a good look around this car's cabin. But I'll summarise now. This design is really effortless. It's dead simple easy to use and it all feels very very well made apart from one bit of plastic that i found here that's maybe a little bit on the cheap side so yeah don't go doing that or touching it and you won't mind in terms of practicality yeah this car's pretty good so decent sized glove box you've got some good storage under here two usb inputs for your driver and your passenger's mobile phone and the door bins they can hold a big bottle and it's the same story actually in the back seat See, even rear passengers, they have large door bins. Now, let me show you the space we've got back here. So, knee room's really good, plenty of headroom. One slight problem is that this car isn't great for carrying three in the back because this middle chair is a bit smaller than the outer two and you've got this huge lump in the floor. So, yeah, it's a bit firm, this seat, and well, you have got enough room in the footwell, thankfully, and headroom isn't bad in the middle, but, you know, it could be a little bit better. You do have the option of folding down decent armrests and there's some cup holders in there. And if you pay an extra 300 or so pounds, you can get seats which slide and recline as well, depending on whether you want a bit more passenger space or more boot space. Depends on your mood, doesn't it? Eh? Now, in terms of boot space, the capacity is on a par with its German rivals when you've got the seats in their normal configuration. You also have standard get a automated tailgate you may like that or you may not depends on your point of view so the boot itself is a nice square shape but it's not a hundred percent perfect for instance there is a little ridge to lift stuff over I mean, it's not too bad but other cars like this you can slide items straight out there is no lip also i can't for the life of me find a 12 volt socket in here as standard though there are various tethering points here and here under this floor Yes, there's not much room for anything else. We've got all the gubbins for the puncture repair kit. Now, like I said earlier, this one has the upgraded rear seats and as well as being able to move forwards and backwards, and actually when you move them forwards, you increase the boot's capacity by around a fifth, you can fold them down individually. So look, you can fold down the middle one on the standard car, you can't do that. And you can fold the others using these levers. The only problem is, as you can see, they don't actually fold down very well on their own accord. So you have to go and do it yourself. And once you've moved them down, you've kind of got a almost continuous load space there. Though, let's be honest, that's a little bit of a faff. You know, you don't expect that from an Audi, do you? If you want more detail on this car's practicality, you can click up there to watch my detailed practicality video. So much stuff you can fit in this car's boot, how easy it is to fit a child seat, and exactly what it's like with three adults in the back. So far then, the Audi Q5 is pretty impressive. But how does it feel when you hit the road? Now, the first question you might have is, is this SUV, this sports utility vehicle, exciting? And the answer to that is no. A BMW X5 is more fun to drive. However, the other question you'll probably have is, is it a good car to drive? And the answer to that is without doubt, yes. So this thing steers well enough. It goes around corners well. There's loads of grip. All models come with Quattro all-wheel drive. And yeah, 
you know, does all that it needs to. It's comfortable as well. So I do have a word of warning. You see, this particular model is the S-Line and it's got lowered stiffened suspension and it perhaps rides a little bit too firmly. But if you ask your dealer to go with the normal suspension, yeah, it goes over bumps very, very well. However, for around a thousand pounds, you can get the optional adaptive dampers and then it's even more comfortable. You can go one better than that. For around £2,000 more, you can actually get this car with air suspension. And then it just glides up the road like a luxury limousine. Now, you can also alter the height of the car with that if you want to, which is ideal if you want to go off-roading. Though, to be fair, if you're into off-roading, yeah, Land Rover Discovery Sport is better. But let's be honest, how many people take these kind of cars off-road? Hardly any. In terms of engines, you can get a V6 turbo petrol in the SQ5, and that'll do 0 to 60 in around five seconds. If you want pace, but with better economy, you'll be able to get a V6 diesel. Now, most people go for a four-cylinder engine, and if you've been put off diesels of late, then the two-litre TFSI turbo petrol is pretty good. However, if you can forgive Audi of diesel gate, then the two-litre diesel in this car is actually the better bet, because it's pretty much just as quick and more economical. Now, all Audi Q5s come with an automatic gearbox as standard. And the interesting thing is, the one on this car, it, it actually includes a launch control function. Not that you're ever going to use it, but so long as you've got the car in its dynamic mode, you've got the stability control in sports mode, the gearbox is in sports mode, all you have to do is pull up, put your left foot on the brake, throw the throttle, it'll hold the revs, release the brake, and yeah, it goes. And apparently this car will do 0 to 62 miles an hour in 7.9 seconds, though that will, of course, affect your economy. This particular car is supposed to do 55 miles per gallon, though I'm getting 39. I'm a little bit disappointed in that. Other things about this car that disappoint me, um, visibility. Actually, it's pretty good. And if you click up there, you can see for yourself by joining me for a 360 degree passenger ride video. So something else then. Maybe the fact that you do notice the tire roar a bit, but I don't think that's because this car has particularly bad road noise. It's probably better than its rivals. It's just that your ears seem to pick it up because there's absolutely no wind noise at all. That's partly due to the fact you've got this acoustic windscreen which deadens most of the sound. And I've just thought of something. If you pay extra for the piloted assist, the car can effectively drive itself. It's just that you can't take your hands off the wheel for too long, otherwise the system disengages, which is a bit of a shame because otherwise you could use the car pretty much as a chauffeur and just jump into the back. Though to be fair, Audi makes it disengage for legal reasons and safety, so I probably can't pick that. Okay, okay, something else. Um, oh, I know. Did I say this isn't the most exciting SUV to drive? I do. I said that at the beginning, didn't I? Okay, well, I, I guess I'm done here. Actually, the Audi Q5 isn't totally perfect. There are some annoying things about it. Here's five. The rear windows don't go all the way down, and that really, really annoys me. Why can't you just make it all the way down? Hill Hold Assist is a £75 option. I mean, come on, Audi. The system's already pre-installed. Why can't you give it people for free? Audi drivers tend to like to look cool. So it's a bit of miss that Audi hasn't specifically built in a sunglasses holder somewhere in the car. While the load cover is fairly easy to remove, there's actually no clever storage place within the car for you to leave it. And that's just a bit. Even though it's all new, this new Q5 looks rather similar to the old Q5. So there's the old one, there's the new one. Or is that the old one and this the new one? Who knows? Actually, of course I know, I'm a motor engineer. This is my job, I'm, I'm just trying to make a point, okay? Thankfully, the Q5 has plenty of cool features, which more than make up for all this. The sat-nav can learn your preferred regular routes and will send you on the best one depending on the time of day and the traffic. The optional LED matrix headlamps can block off part of their beam so you don't dazzle oncoming drivers. Also, when you approach a junction, the beam span can get wider like this so you get a better view. You can get wireless charging for your mobile phone. Well, if your phone is not enough to have that functionality. Plus, this slidey tray allows you to keep your mobile phone out of sight so you're not distracted by it when you're driving. Safety is important. By moving the side mirrors from up there to there has helped make this car the most aerodynamic in its class. See, it works. The car has Isofix fittings on the front passenger seat, though it's not exactly ideal if you're a big baby.
Now, if you click up there, you can go to carwire.co.uk for more information and to save around £2,000 on a new Audi Q5. So then, what's my verdict on this car? Should you avoid it? Should you consider it? Should you shortlist it? Or should you just go right ahead and buy it? Well, I reckon you should go right ahead and buy the Q5. It might not be the most exciting car in the world, but it's a brilliant all-rounder and one of the very best premium SUVs. If you enjoyed this video, please like it and share it and click on our logo to subscribe. There for our detailed practicality video, there for our detailed infotainment video, and there for my 360 degree passenger ride video. Now, did you spot the Easter egg in the video? It was the band Q5 playing on the car's media system.